So the equipment that you need is a pinning block and a spreading board. So you pin each different insect in a different place. So if we look at our handy dandy Know Your Insect Guide, which you can get from uh, your local cooperative extension office or you can order, it lists the different places that you pin different insects. As you can see, you pin the uh, Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths, kind of right between the two front wings right here. So you, you want to pick up your insect and pin it. So when you're, doing, when you're actually pinning insects, you want to use special insect pens that are they're longer and skinnier. Um, and I got it, if you can actually get them out. Insect pens come in different sizes, so uh, if you have a bigger insect, you want to use a bigger pen. Then what you want to do is just take the pen and pin it. Butterfly. Then you always want to look at the butterfly and make sure that it is straight on your pen. And that one looks pretty good. Then you want to uh, make sure that your insect is pinned at perfect height. And then when you're using your spreading board, what you want to do is try and find a place where the insect is relatively close. Let's just do this one over here. Really, relatively close to the side of your, of your uh, board. There we go. You want to be careful to try not to, I bumped my moth little, uh, butterfly here, a little bit here. And you want to try and be as careful as you can to not do that. So then what you want to do is you want to take a pen and carefully spread the wings apart. Now if you're using a, a wooden board, this is a time that you'd want to use your regular metal uh, sewing pens. But I'm just on cardboard here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just use regular insect pens. So you just want to... Um, Carefully spread the wings. You want to try and find relatively big uh, vein here to try and and use to move the wing. Then, if like this one's uh, this butterfly in particular is moving a lot, so what you can do to fix that is just try and give the body a little extra support here. So what I'm doing is spilling pens all over the place. Um, I am just putting a, a pen on either side of the butterfly, and this will just pinch the abdomen a little bit, make it so it doesn't move quite as much, and it's a little bit easier to work with. And then just try and get the pens in here. Cut. All right, so now that I've secured the abdomen so it's not going to wiggle on me all over the place, supposedly, we wanna just start with those wings and just get them out a little bit. So you want to have uh, some sort of paper or something to hold the wings in place that you've made already made ahead of time. And then you just slip them over and you uh, slip the pins in here. So you're actually pinning through the, uh, the cardboard and not through the wing. Right, yes, thank you. Yes, you want to make sure that you're not uh, pinning through the wing here as much as possible. And then when you're done with both sides, you want to leave the, the uh, moth or butterfly, whichever it is, in this case it's a moth, and just let it sit for about three or four days so it can harden. Today I'm going to show you how to pin this very large click beetle here. All right, so the first thing you want to do is check in your, I love this book, how, Know Your Insects, about where you want to put the pin. As you can see, just below the thorax, there, there, and just to the right. Now, you have your, ins you've got your pin. Preferably, prescribe. Preferably, just look at your insect and say, is that a thick enough pin or is that too thick? And then, just very carefully, insert it. There. And it goes. And then, when you find, when you've got it through, you use the pinning block to get it to the to the to get it to the prescribed height on the pin. All right. Also, this is the finished product you see here. Notice how it is so, isn't tilting on the pin. That's very important to look at the pitch. That'll take a couple points off if you if your beetle is like 
crazily over to one side. I started out just doing a general collection, which was all the insects that I caught uh, in a year and then also some insects from previous years. And then I moved on to doing special collections, so that had a, a special focus. So I did a collection just on beetles, I did a collection just on uh, 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 wasps. And what, what I have here is uh, I did a collection of all the insects I found within a one mile radius of my house. Oh, very interesting. And how many insects were you able to find within the one mile radius? Too many. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, 50 to 100. So the way I ended up doing my collection is I divided it um, by habitat for where the insects would be found just to uh, try and give people an, uh, kind of an idea of where the insects might be found around their house. Um, and then I just tried to take my posters and just uh, give a little glimpse of, first of all, like where I kind of uh, found things or would expect to find things around my house. So. Uh, this is my house and then just my kind of my neighborhood where I found different things. Uh, and then just kind of giving an educational look at insects, trying to make this a little more educational. So just looking at um, the quali qu uh, water quality, wh what kind of insects like different uh, water qualities, uh, d then uh, life cycle of uh, potato beetle and uh, then like just a whole food chain here and then again just some specialization. So just looking at some insects in particular uh, and showing how they're specialized to do the job that they do. Mm -hmm.